I don't know what you guys have been doing all weekend, but I've just been like clicking refresh on crypto Twitter, trying to figure out what's going to happen with this infrastructure bill, because if it passes with the current language, it's going to be absolutely devastating to the crypto industry. This is why the entire industry has been mobilized over the past few days, calling senators. You even had um, Blackburn say that the calls have actually been making a difference. Like it's it's kind of a, a phenomenon going on here. So this infrastructure bill, giant spending uh, plan was expected to be voted on Thursday night, um, well into the night, but then that just kept getting pushed back and back throughout the weekend because the crypto provision is really holding things up. Uh, they are not happy with the language. There's a, a bipartisan uh, disagreement about this. You have different proposals have been put forward. Now the people have been fighting, <laughs> fighting it out uh, as to which uh, amendment is going to pass. So the, where we are at the moment, basically, to summarize, um, so because there's a partisan disagreement on spending, uh, Democrats have objected to all further amendments. Uh, basically, the only path forward that we have right now is a two-step process where we basically need uh, the two negotiating parties who put forward their uh, conflicting uh, new amendments for the crypto provision. Um, they basically need to reach a deal. They need to find language that they both agree on. But then the second part, uh, which is the real tricky part, is that you need no senator to object to the adoption of this new language. Uh, it means a completely unanimous decision there. It's a very narrow path. Uh, it's not clear whether this is going to be feasible. What happens after this is this basically we're expecting this to be voted on today uh, and then this will go to the House and we're not quite sure when this will be voted on. There's conflicting reports about whether we've got to wait for some other bill to be voted on and then we're not going to vote on this for a while in the House. Other people are trying to push this forward uh, more quickly. But it, we're really at the 11th hour of what has been an incredibly, uh, I don't know, I, it's like anxiety inducing weekend, I guess I'll, I'll put it, because at the moment, the current language for this crypto provision is sweeping in a bunch of people potentially that have no ability to provide the reporting requirements that's being demanded of them in this, uh, in this language. It's potentially sweeping in different miners. And, um, you know, there, there's been talks like in different provisions about which miners they're considering, but now all that's been swept away and we're going back to the original language, which would potentially include miners, uh, potentially include software developers, all of this. And a lot of people in the industry are saying if this happens, it's just going to move everything offshore. It's literally just going to take all the in uh, innovation and take it out of the US. So we really, we are at the 11th hour. I think that um, Senators Toomey and Lummis are holding a press conference right now. From what I've seen of the press conference so far, they haven't announced any agreement in language. Uh, the conference has just ended and I think they're basically just saying, listen, there's still time and you can still vote for our amendment, which is going to, um, you know, protect innovation without stifling it and pushing it overseas while still making sure people pay their taxes. That's kind of where we're at right now. I'm like, I'm like, I got goosebumps watching this, guys. I don't know if you guys get goosebumps watching the Senate. It's a new experience for me personally, but this will be huge. We cannot understate how huge this will be for crypto if this goes through. But I'll throw to the group. Um, will, what, what's your take on all this? Have you been as obsessed with this over the weekend as I have? I tried to get away from it a little bit, but it was very hard to uh, kind of step back at all. Uh, a, a few thoughts I had from a high level is one that it's, it's fascinating to see the crypto industry rally around this. I think that very large percentage of Americans who hold crypto are actually interested in this industry, which is just really encouraging, I think, for everyone who's been in the space for a while. Uh, you know, it's only a decade old industry and you now have one of the largest infrastructure bills on Capitol Hill being held up by a ragtag bunch of DGENs who are interested in the future of money, which <laughs> cannot be, you know, understated enough or overstated enough rather. So that's fascinating. Also, second point is now this is making me wonder about every other industry that is kind of has the rules decided by Washington. Like, is it just crypto that they got so wrong? Or is this kind of like the history of bills? I won't delve too deep into that because uh, I do want to throw it to David and see what his thoughts are about all of this. Oh, yeah. Um, well, it sounded like Naomi, seemed like Naomi had a specific response if you wanted to jump in. 
Yeah, well, I was just going to say that specifically the crypto industry, I believe, was targeted um, as this pay for in the infrastructure bill because it is new, because you have other industries that are so much uh, better established. They've been around for longer. They have better lobbying groups. And so if they were to say like, oh, here's a giant bill where we're going to spend a huge amount of money, there's no way that's going to pass unless they have a pay for clause in there that says this is how we're going to cover our expenses. So they just said crypto is a thing and we're just going to include all the things. Miners could be in there, software devs, we're going to tax them all. And then now they're like, oh, great, we're going to get billions of dollars from this, right? If you had more established industries where they push this to, they would have just lobbied this out of the water. Now, if this, uh, I mean, that being said, crypto lobbying has gotten much better over the last couple of years. Like if this had happened a year ago, then I don't think we would have gotten nearly as much support and had nearly as many people working on this. But it really mm -hmm. has matured. And I think maybe they were shocked at how matured it has become and how many people were able to rally to this cause. I don't think you would have had people who have a Chase Bank account if like traditional banking had been brought in saying like, I'm a Chase Bank holder and I object. Like I just don't think they would have gotten the rallying cry. But crypto is such a passionate cause for people that it just mobilized a huge amount of people that I don't think they were expecting. But I'll, uh, I'll throw to you, uh, David or Zach, or who, who has some thoughts on all um, this? I'll jump in if, if, and then Zach, you had, I think, the next spot on the stack. I just want to say two things. Um, one, on sort of substance, um, we did have some statements from uh, Porter, who was the author of the original language. Um, and he came out and said the intention here is not to redefine mm -hmm. uh, miners, developers, and software producers as brokers. Um, but it, you know, it's confusing to me. So maybe that's a bit of a question for the group: is why you would make a statement like that without actually being open to the idea of revising the language of the bill yeah. itself. Um, so that's a little puzzling. I also did want to make one note for context, which is, as Naomi no noted, like this was a, a, a pay for in this bill. One of the reasons that this was, and I think it's logical to assume one of the reasons this was so poorly crafted and put in at the last minute is because they had to come up with new pay fors after mm -hmm. primarily Republicans rejected a part of the budget proposal that would have expanded staffing at the IRS in a way to improve oversight of existing tax laws that would have itself raised $100 billion. So three times more than what we're talking about here. Um, and that's without having to write, you know, new definitions or expand jurisdictions into new spaces. So um, I don't necessarily have a comment on that, but I think it's vital context to realize that this is happening because another pay for that was far less complex was already rejected by legislators. Uh, and, and Zach, you have the next spot. I have nothing smart to add. I'm a, I'm a bit, I was off last week, as, as you may recall. So I caught a little bit of the drama and doing some late night Twitter scrolling, but I just wanted to zoom out a little bit and like frame this big monumental moment, right? So if I'm a small time crypto holder, I'm discovering this industry for the first time. How does this proposed amendment affect me? I think the stakes for the industry are very clear, but for your average crypto person, like what's the takeaway? Why, what, why is this so significant? I would just like to, to hear a little bit of that. Yeah, I'm happy to jump in there. I mean, this is going to push jobs offshore. This is going to push a lot of, a lot of prosperity offshore. You had Charles Hoskinson had this amazing rant last week where he's saying, listen, I have billions of dollars. I'm paying my taxes. I am all compliant with everything. All this is going to do is mean that I hire less people in Wyoming, less people in Colorado. He's going to be looking overseas for this. So yeah, American people are going to be losing out in terms of jobs, uh, but also it's just going to be a lot harder for people in America to access these services. If, America, if companies um, you know, are not quite sure if they're being compliant or not, they're not going to be creating good business relationships with other companies in the United States. They're not going to be offering to United States citizens. Uh, it's not good for anyone who's in crypto or wants to get involved with crypto or is working in the industry uh, in, in the United States. And it is interesting, like you mentioned, what you mentioned, David, about like that like, why is Portman coming up with this alternative amendment if he's literally just echoing the same things that the Lummis amendment already made clear in the language? Um, you know, and, and Jerry Brito brought up a great point where he says, you know, this statement is definitely going to help. Uh, uh, it's statement of intent will help Treasury interpret it correctly. But again, it just it's just this big, uh, it, it opens up so much room for moving around uh, with this this language. And so it's not it's not good that they haven't pinned it down, they're refusing to, to pin that down. 